Seven things that may affect your pre-approval amount. And guess what? One of them is not interest rates. Today on Major Money Matters. Welcome to Major Money Matters. My name is Mage. I'm a mortgage broker powered by Edge Home Finance. If this is your first time to the channel, I do encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe because we post things here that help you in your home buying or your home selling process. And I really wanted to talk about today seven things that may affect your pre-approval amount because a lot of the talk right now is around interest rates. And I am finding that interest rates have an effect on your monthly payment but there are some things that have a much bigger effect on how much you actually qualify for. And you have somebody that say, well, I don't qualify anymore because of interest rates. And sometimes that's true, but often it's not because it's not the interest rate, it's the thing added on with the interest rate. So I'm talking to my personal trainer and my personal trainer says, Major, you're running like three miles a day. You're doing great. The problem is you're eating donuts, which is why you can't lose weight. And I'm okay exercising, I just like donuts, man. Um, so it's it's not just the interest rates, it's the stuff added on with the interest rates. So let's go through this list of things that we're seeing affecting people's pre-approval numbers. Number one is gonna be car payments. Now, when I'm talking to someone, the first thing I will ask them when I get past their income and all of this stuff, I will ask them, do you have a car payment? Now, if somebody does not have a car payment, I know that there's a likely chance that they are gonna to qualify to buy a home because they don't have a car payment. There are other people who have a car payment for $600 for the husband and $600 for the wife or, you know, it's, it, and they have a combined $1,200 in car payments. That's gonna significantly impact your pre-approval amount because every $100 that you actually have of debt actually decreases your purchasing power. And I'm going to talk about how much it decreases your purchase power in a second. Number two, paying off your debts at the wrong time. So this is also kind of interesting because you'll have people who come to me and they'll say, Hey, major, we have a credit card, but we pay it off at the end of the month, every single month. And that's actually true. The problem is that is actually reported by the credit card companies to the credit bureaus on say the 25th of the month. That means when I'm looking at your credit report, I'm seeing your debt at like $2,000 extra at the end of the month because it's being reported to the credit bureau on the 25th when actually you're making the monthly payment say on the 31st or the first of the following month and you're paying it off every single month. But when a mortgage professional looks at your credit report, it simply says that you have this extra debt that really you do not have. So know when your credit card company reports your balance to your uh, to the credit bureaus so that you can pay it off before it actually reports to the credit bureaus. It's going to make your pre-approval process a lot easier. Now, can we maneuver around that? Yes. We can, but this makes your pre-approval process a lot easier and ensures that you are qualified for much more on your pre-approval. Number three, property taxes. Now this is a good one because sometimes I have people who say, hey, I am gonna buy a home in Hawaii, right? And they go to Hawaii and for whatever reason they don't buy a home and then they move to Texas. And they say, well, I was pre-approved for $500,000 when we were moving into Hawaii and nothing has changed and now we're going to go to Texas. I still have $500,000, right? And that is absolutely wrong. Property taxes can definitely mess up your pre-approval amount because the property taxes in Hawaii are literally one ninth to one tenth of what the property taxes are in Texas. Property tax rate in Hawaii, 0.3% property tax rate in Texas, 2.2 or higher percentage there. And that property tax amount actually eats away at your monthly payment, which actually eats away at the amount that you can buy a home for. So your property taxes, if you're pre-approved in one county based on one home and you change and go to a different county, just across county lines, it could mess up your pre-approval amount. Property tax are another thing that can actually decrease the amount that you're actually pre-approved for. Number four, child support. 
child support can actually decrease the amount that you're pre-approved for. In all, for all intents and purposes, that child support that you pay every single month is a debt. So that amount has to be considered a debt when we're doing your pre-approval amount. Now, this can work for you on the other side if you happen to actually be receiving child support. You can actually use that to qualify for more on your pre-approval amount. It's up to you whether you want to use those funds or not to qualify for more. But if you're paying child support or receiving child support, it's definitely something that impacts your pre-approval amount. Number five, child care costs. Now this is kind of particular because this is interesting on a VA loan only. If you're doing a VA loan and you actually pay child uh, care costs, that child care cost has to be calculated on a VA loan. The guidelines state that the child care cost has to be calculated into essentially a monthly payment. So this is only particular on a VA loan. However, the child care cost that you pay on a monthly basis does have to be calculated. So if you're in a situation where mom or dad keeps the kids while you're at work, uh, or you're in a situation where uh, you work from home and you don't have a child care cost or something like that, that is definitely better because if you're someone that works outside the home or you have a couple that works outside the home, your child care cost being factored in actually does affect the amount that you're pre-approval for and it drives it down. Number six, number six thing that can actually affect your pre-approval amount is if you don't claim your rental income on your taxes. Now, there are some little caveats here where if you're just moving out of that home and you're, uh, you're kind of uh, moving out and renting that home out and then moving into a different home and you're buying, then you don't have to really, there's not been the opportunity to claim your, your, uh, your rental income on that in those situations. But if you've been renting a home for five years and you have not claimed the rental income on your taxes, technically the underwriter has to do what we call hit you for that full mortgage payment. So you're kind of carrying a mortgage payment even if you have a renter in there and that renter has been there for five years and you don't claim that on your taxes, then guess what? You're actually paying two house payments. So do yourself a favor and claim your rental income on your taxes. It will mess up your pre-approval when you're going to buy another house. Finally, I leave this one for last because really it all comes down to this. So number seven is the amount of debt that you actually have. That is really what it comes down to when you're getting pre-approved. So every $100 of debt that you have actually robs you of $20,000 of purchasing power. You need to know that number because if you're planning to buy a house and you're going and you're going to run up, like say, maybe you're going to say, Hey, maybe I could afford this $300 a month, uh, furniture payment or this $500 a month, a uh, car payment that is actually robbing you on the pre-approval side and that's driving your debt to income ratio up which decreases the amount that you're actually approved for on the total side so every hundred dollars of debt that you have means that you could have qualified for twenty thousand dollars more and when it comes down to it this is what really messes up people when they're in the middle of an escrow process when they go and get a debt that really drives up or brings down the amount that you're, pre you're pre-approved for. So if you're buying like at the top of your pre-approval amount, you're you're at like, you know, your, your max pre-approval is 500,000 and you are under contract at 490,000 and you go and you get a payment for $200 while you're in escrow, you're gonna have a problem because you've driven that up and now you don't qualify anymore, all right? So those are seven things that I want you to keep in mind because everybody's telling you about interest rates and everybody's telling you how high interest rates are and that does affect your monthly payment. It has a small effect on actually how much you qualify for. But really, it's the working out plus the diet. It's the interest rate plus the debt that's causing you not to qualify. See you next time on Major Money Matters.